What's up everyone, my name is Ale. Welcome back to My World of Stocks and welcome back to my favorite series on the channel where we talk about all the stocks that I've been buying or selling last month, which was March, 2022, and all the stocks that I'm thinking about buying or selling this month here in April as well. It's a really fun series that we do on the channel, but before we jump into it, just wanna quickly give you guys an idea of where my head's been at with the macro economy and where things are right now. I really feel that we're on very shaky ground when looking at the economy. Of course, inflation is through the roof. Gas prices are absolutely ridiculous. And as if all of that wasn't bad enough, we also have this global conflict going on between Russia and Ukraine that is adding even more pressure to the stock market, which was already, in my opinion, highly valued and experiencing a lot of pressure for its own reasons to begin with. So not very good stuff there. I know I sound pretty pessimistic. On the bright side, you could also argue that a lot of the focus that was initially placed on the pepperoni, the global health issue, and on locking things down and on really destroying the economy in a lot of ways, a lot of that has shifted over to the Russia-Ukraine situation. Really feels like the world is kind of moving past the pepperoni. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I'm not here to give personal opinions. I'm just saying what's going on right now. And when looking at the economy, it really does feel like we are opening businesses back up in a very meaningful way. So there is a chance here for an economic recovery as well. So it's kind of shaky. We don't really know where things are going to go in the short term, medium term or even long term. But as a long term investor, I do tend to be more optimistic about the future, just kind of naturally. But as a more just kind of rational minded person here in the short term, I am a little more pessimistic. So in any case, my opinion is that we're going to continue to see a ton of volatility because of all the craziness going on right now. So I think you'll see big swings both up and down. And I think that corrections and maybe even market crashes are a possibility. We don't really know what's going to happen, but I think that volatility could present us with some great buying opportunities for some very good stocks if we're thinking long term. And so that's where my, my mind has been at. In fact, last month in March, I saw some stocks that I really like falling to some very low prices and I went out and I did some shopping and I actually picked up quite a few stocks last month. So let me just quickly tell you guys which stocks I purchased last month and then we'll transition over to here in April and I'll tell you what stocks I'm looking to pick up here as well. Let's jump into it. All right, now I didn't do any selling last month, only made purchases and it was five different stocks in total that I picked up. And the first of those was Facebook and Instagram parents company Meta, ticker symbol FB, who's really been crashing for a while now, mostly due to the restructuring of their business as they try to go all in on the future of the metaverse, which everyone really expects to be a huge drag on their profits and likely won't contribute big enough revenues anytime soon to ease all the worries that investors are panicking over right now. And to top it all off, their legacy platform in Facebook has been slowing down and actually lost users last quarter for the first time in history. But even with all of that negativity, this still remains one of the most profitable companies in the world, doing almost $40 billion of net income just last year alone, not to mention the 100 plus billion that they did in sales. And yet they're still expected to grow revenues by double digit percentages both this year and the next. Now, the stock has recovered a little recently, but even here, it's still down close to 40% from its highs. At one point, it was trading close to $400 a share, but has now fallen to the 230 range. Not only have I always felt that Facebook stock was undervalued, but especially this year, I think Meta's stock crash was way overdone. So I went ahead and picked up some more shares in March at a couple different price points, but all of them were below $200 each. So I am pretty happy with those purchases. Probably won't be buying any more shares here in April though, unless it starts falling again, just because I've already done quite a bit of buying in recent months and especially last month in March. Okay, moving on though, I also purchased some more of Scott's miracle Grow ticker symbol SMG. It's not a stock that I'm super excited about personally, but I just think that the world is always going to need their various garden and landscaping products. And it even has some good long-term growth potential in the MJ market. So because of that, I just feel that their nice 2% plus dividend is not going away anytime soon and will likely get larger over time considering the super low payout ratio of just around 30%. I started buying this one after a really big crash that still leaves them down almost 50% from their highs 
because of the slowdown coming off of the lockdowns ending and people spending less time and money, you know, fixing up their gardens and, you know, just kind of going out and living their lives again. But my purchase last month was for around $113 a share. So I'm pretty happy about that price long term, but I'll probably be taking a break here in April on this one too. All right, now moving on to stock number three, I also purchased some more of Google, ticker symbol G-O-O-G-L, which was actually a brand new purchase for me just a month prior in February. But I've been buying this one uh, because of a little dip that they were going through, and I went ahead and picked up some more shares at around the $2,500 range, uh, which is looking pretty good right now as they have already climbed back up to the $2,800 range. Uh, long term, I just think that this is a stock that you can never really go wrong with. With, even trading near an all-time high right now, they still have a very reasonable valuation with a PEG ratio of just one. I mean, that's pretty incredible when you put it into context. This is a company that dominates virtually every aspect of internet usage and data collection that also did over $250 billion in sales just last year alone, with over $70 billion of that going straight to the bottom line. And despite that already gigantic size, 2021 was a skyrocketing year year for them as they grew their sales by over 40 percent and yet not only are their sales not going to be flat or in decline after that monstrous year but they're actually expected to still grow by double digit percentages both this year and the next i mean what's not to like i guess the only thing that will kind of hold me back from buying more here in april is just because it already bounced up so much from where i bought it but even here, I still think it's a great option for most long-term investors. Moving on though to stock number four, I also picked up some more of Palantir, ticker symbol PLTR. I know, not much of a surprise. It's definitely been one of my worst performing stocks in recent months, and that's made me have to keep buying it more and more as it falls. But I went ahead and picked up some more shares here in March at around $10 a share, which finally looks like a good move on my part because the stock proceeded to bounce back up to the $14 range and yet even here, I still think that this is going to be a good long-term stock to own as it's still down over 50% from its 52-week high and significantly more if you go back to its all-time high. But in my opinion, this giant crash was not justified for such a high-growth company with so much future potential. Sales are still growing by around 30% a year. EPS is growing at over 40% per year over the next five years. And then when you look at the future potential, you got to remember, this is an AI-focused article artificial intelligence focused data analysis specialist that is trusted heavily by the US government who consistently grants them numerous contracts worth many millions of dollars each. And my point is that if the US government trusts them so much, then you know corporations are going to trust them too. And that's where Palantir has a massive opportunity for expansion and growth. That's exactly what you're seeing already. Last year, government revenue grew by 26%, which is still very high, but Meanwhile, commercial sales grew by almost 50% and U.S. commercial sales grew by over 130%, which by the way, it also saw its customer count grow by close to 400%. So a lot of companies are starting to realize that they need Palantir services. So when you look at the massive future of AI and how companies and governments will need to use it, I just think... With Palantir, you get a pretty trusted name and the stock price makes sense to me at these levels if you're thinking long term. I just have too many spec stocks right now, so I'm not really sure you know, if I'll be buying more here in April. I think I'm going to take a much needed break from any kind of you know more speculative stocks, which Palantir tends to be considered. But like I said, it's still a stock that I like long term. And finally, for stock number five, I also picked up some more shares of Disney, ticker symbol DIS, after seeing it dip a little in March, where it fell by close to 8%, leaving it at a 52-week low and still down over 20% in the past six months, even today. Now, in the past few weeks, it did rebound back up to the $130 range, but I was able to scoop up some shares in the 120s, which I'm feeling pretty good about long-term. In my opinion, Disney deserves to be trading closer to a 52-week high right now rather than a low, considering how much things are opening back up, which will benefit their theme parks, resorts, and cruises, leading to 30% revenue growth this year and still double-digit growth next year as well. Not to mention the long-term growth potential of their streaming platforms that are fueled by extremely popular content from massive brands like Star Wars, Marvel, Nat Geo, ESPN, ABC, Fox, Pixar, the list goes on. And by the way, I can't freaking wait for the Obi-Wan Kenobi show to come out too. So there's just so much to like there. But you just add it all up and I think it's a solid stock for the long term. 
I might even buy some more shares here in April if it dips at all again. But okay, with all of those moves out of the way, what am I looking to pick up here in April? Well, as you might have noticed, all of the stocks that I purchased in uh, March last month, none of them included any dividends. And if you guys know me, you know that I love dividend stocks. And I love them for many reasons, especially when we're dealing with a weak macro economy and going through a lot of volatility. Because with dividends, not only do you get to collect dividend payments throughout all the volatility, which makes it way easier to hold on to those stocks long term, brings down a lot of the stress, a lot of the pressure when you're actually still collecting dividend payments, even when you see the stock price falling. But the other great thing about dividends is that even if the stock price does fall, well, you can just go out and buy some more of that stock because guess what? That dividend yield is going to go up. The more that the stock price goes down, you buy it at that lower price, you'll have a higher dividend yield on it. So that's what I love about dividends during weak economic times, during you know volatile stock markets. I love dividend stocks. So here in April, I got to pick up some more dividends because I didn't get any last month. So uh, let me just quickly run through three dividend stocks that are really probably at the highest uh, on my list right now to to be picking up here in April that I would love to pick up. Let me just run through those and then we'll wrap up the video. Okay, now first I want to mention two quick dividend growth stocks that I talked about in my last dividend growth video. And those are the home improvement retail giant Home Depot, ticker symbol HD, and the diagnostics repair and system solution specialist Snap-on Incorporated, ticker symbol SNA. Now, like I said, I already talked about these in a recent video, so I'll just keep it really short and to the point here. I don't want to regurgitate a bunch of information, but just looking at their dividends alone, they have some excellent growth metrics on them that I think makes for some great long-term options. In Home Depot's case, they already have a yield above 2.5% with a low payout ratio below 50%, a growth rate of getting you know somewhat close to 20%, which is very high, and over a decade of consecutive growth to go along with it while Snap-on has an even higher yield of 2.8% with an even lower payout ratio of below 35%, that's very low, and still a nice growth rate of 15% and 12 years of growth added on, which by the way, they've also paid their dividend consistently every quarter without ever reducing it for an absolutely monstrous over 80 years in a row, that's incredible. Both also have really sticky businesses that I don't think are ever going away, in fact, Home Depot is even doing a great job of adjusting to the rise of online shopping by already commanding the fifth most e-commerce market share in the US, even ahead of giants like Target, Best Buy, and Costco. And both stocks have also been declining in recent months, which if you guys know anything about me, you know that I love to buy stocks when they're going down rather than when they're going up. And in HD's case, the stock is down close to 30% from its highs and sits near the bottom of its 52 week range, while Snap-on is also down about 20% from its highs and is sitting fairly close to the bottom of its 52 week range as well. If they continue to fall like this, I'll be looking to add both of these two stocks to my portfolio for the first time ever. Now, while those would be new stocks, uh, one stock that I already own and would like to add some more of is Verizon, ticker symbol VZ. And the reasoning is very simple. The dividend yield is mouthwatering at almost 5%. And while the growth rate is super low at just a measly 2%, it has at least been grown for 17 years in a row and carries a payout ratio of less than 50%. So sure, it might not be growing by much, but that yield is already very high and it's not likely to disappear anytime soon. So rather than it being considered you know, a growth-oriented dividend like the others that I mentioned, this is more of a stable and reliable income-focused dividend that already gives you a high yield right now and will continue to in the future. As such though, their financials are also very low growth. Sales typically grow by only a couple percentage points a year, just like the dividend, and it's not a very exciting business either. However, like the dividend, the business is pretty reliable long term since people will always need, you know, telephone and internet services, and that's where Verizon shines as they are consistently ranked number one in overall quality. They even broke a record last year after collecting the most JD Power awards for network quality at 26 consecutive times. It's pretty crazy. And while I mostly care about the dividend myself, I also like the fact that the stock has been suppressed over the years, only climbing by less than 10% in the past five years and currently sitting near the bottom of its 52 week range, also leaving their PE ratio very low at less than 10, which is not just lower than its five year average of around 12 and lower than its high of about 16 and a half, but it's also about 50% 
uh, cheaper than the rest of the sector too. So with the upside potential of a suppressed stock coupled with a super attractive dividend that in my opinion is also very safe long term, I just think it's looking pretty attractive at today's prices. But there you have it guys. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Those are all the moves that I made last month, the moves I'm looking to make here this month. Of course, things can change and there are other stocks that I would love to pick up too, depending on what happens, but you'll have to just keep updated with the channel and keep watching my videos to see if any new stuff you know pops up. Uh, with that said, please make sure that you subscribe. Please hit the like button. Let me know what stocks you've been buying or selling. Let me know down below because sometimes I get, you know, inspired by you guys and then I make videos based on those stocks too. So anyway, let me know down there. I hope you're all doing well. I will catch you in the next video. Thank you for all the support. Take care. Bye-bye.